Let's go. Hi. So uh, we're going. Hi. Um, we're going to talk about a, a bit of uh, uh, sustainability, right? And so the thing we all do together, uh, and how uh, it impacts. Oh, is this working? Yeah, yes. I think. Okay. Oh, yes. And how, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, and how it impacts our planet, and what we can do about it, and how we think about it. So first, um, hmm? okay, yeah. Oh no, this is not me. Oh, ah, yay! So this is me. Hi. So my name is Ori Peckelman. I'm the chief strategy officer at Platform.sh, uh, and and kind of going to do uh, the contrast here, so I, I like slow things, slow cooking, slow reading. Um, and uh, I used to be like the, the chief product officer at Platform to the Sage, there will be a thing about that. And, and uh, uh, an important thing, uh, usually I would not say something like this in, in a talk, but I have kids and it's going to be somewhat of uh, uh, important in this talk. And, and I'll, I'll switch over immediately to, oh, I'll try to. Okay, let's, okay. let's, Let, let's that. be on that side yeah. of the. Hello everyone, um, welcome to this session. My name is Fabien Potentier, I'm the CPO, the new CPO of Platform SH. And uh, I'm uh, the opposite of Ori in the sense that I like things that go, that go fast. Um, it's, it's true when it comes to websites, uh, of course. I'm trying to run fast as well. Um, I'm not sure that that works really well. So it's me during the Paris Marathon. Um, and to be very honest, I was quite slow. Um, anyway, so um, I'm also the creator of Symfony, uh, which is used in Drupal as well. Um, and I really like when I'm able to actually optimize uh, the performance of you know, any website. And, and of course, whenever we are able to optimize uh, Drupal or Symfony or PHP or Linux or whatever you're using, that's great for many reasons and, and we are going to talk about the, these reasons today. Um, okay, I also have kids. Uh, that's the, the thing that we have uh, in common. Anyway, so we are, how many of you are actually developers? Okay, almost everyone. Um, so, we are um, developing things all day long and maybe at some point um, you, you don't even remember that uh, a software is actually running on hardware, right? Um, even if you are using a serverless architecture, right? You are all aware of that, right? At some point we have some hardware. Um, that's very important, and, and the digital uh, world represents something like 4% of carbon emissions in the world. So that's huge. Uh, it's, I think it's even bigger than um, uh, um, uh, planes. And, and yeah, it's, it's basically the same size so as air travel. Yeah, so it's really huge. Um, so we should never forget that whenever we write a piece of code, it runs somewhere can be on a mobile phone, a server somewhere in a data center, whatever. So um, it has some consequences in terms of um, uh, carbon emissions. Okay, um, so how does that work? So we have, you know, you develop a, a small website with Drupal. You host it somewhere. It works, it's nice. And then you have some more traffic, so you are adding more servers, because that's the thing that we are doing, right? Oh, by the way, do you know what is the game here on the screen? Petanque. That's French. <laughs> that's a French game. Um, that's the kind of thing that you are doing when you are a slow man. Like this guy, right? When you're not working, you play the petanque. And you have to um, have a glass of pastis in the other hand, which is like, like a, an out. And uh, so yeah. for equilibrium, it's something really, really slow. It's really nice. Okay. Um, so th th that's just because when something is getting slower, you are throwing metal at it, right? That's the, the analogy here. Get it? Yeah? Okay. 
Okay, you're sleeping. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, so, and, and you can do that, you know, um, many times, and at the end of the day, you have many servers running your crappy software. Or, I mean, you might have also a lot of traffic. Um, and do you need to care? Maybe not, right? And for many years, nobody cared because um, it, it is the cheap way of actually scaling, right? Uh, during the last 20 years, um, everybody is going to say, tell you that adding more servers is much cheaper than hiring more software developers, right? So the right thing to do is to actually hire um, scaling by adding more servers. And if you don't care about the environment, that's something that you can do. If you, have a, if you are a startup, uh, you have a lot of money, so you don't care, optimizing the code is hard, adding more servers is just, you know, writing a bigger check. That's all. No consequences. Uh, and of course, what we are trying to, what we are going to try today is to demonstrate that this is the wrong thing to do and how we can actually uh, do something better. Um, so I was talking about the serverless architecture and nowadays uh, most software developers, they are not even you know, aware of where uh, the code is actually running. 20 years ago, and, and that's a true story, uh, 20 years ago I had a lot of different websites running on um, servers that I own. So I had racks in a data center in Paris, downtown. That's, it, it sounds crazy, but it was, it was actually the case. So I had some racks with servers, real ones. And, you know, whenever something went wrong, like uh, a memory um, problem or a CPU issue or whatever, I had to take my bike and get there. So I had this relationship with the hardware. It was, you know, real machines. So adding more machines meant that I needed to buy the machine, to rack the machine, install Linux and, you know, everything and taking care of that. Nowadays, not so much. How many people are actually still having some servers in their own data centers or racks? Really? Yeah. I You're... Can't get rid of them. Hmm? I can't get rid of them. Nobody wants them. Yeah, of course. So you need to migrate. Um, and there is a, a cool company nowadays named Platform Message. <laughs> and they can help you if you want. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and, and the thing is, you know, um, on top of hardware, we have so many layers now. So you're not, uh, you're not contracting with a data center directly. We have YES, we have uh, Platform as a Service, we have Lambdas and things like that. So you're not even thinking about the machines anymore. Uh, but they are there, of course. Um, and the same goes for um, code as well. How many of you are still writing SQL statements directly? Yeah. More or less, sometimes, right? But most of the time you are using an abstraction layer, uh, an ORM or whatever. Um, and so it means that you're not even thinking about uh, the performance of the code that you're writing because you're not even aware of the SQL statements that are actually executed on the machines. And most of the time, that's really bad. Uh, N plus one issues, for instance, you are all aware of that, uh, so uh, uh, the code can get slow really fast. Okay, so anyway, um, I think that, um, you know, um, and it's not just about uh, software development as in websites, it's also about games, for instance. Um, I'm not into games, but I know that, you know, uh, whenever you start to work on a new game because, or thanks to the uh, Moore law, you know that the machines that the people are going to get in three years from now are going to be much faster. So there is no need to optimize your code because you are going to run on really fast machine. Is it good? I'm not sure. Um, and again, we are going to talk about that. So the conclusion 
for that part is that we need to change our mindset from optimizing the cost to taking care of the planet and the impact on the environment whenever we are doing things. Um, and of course, you can tell me that, yeah, Fabien, you're right. Uh, but again, optimization and cut optimizations are really hard. So adding machines, it's kind of green nowadays, right? If you are having a look at Google, Azure, uh, uh, Amazon, they are all saying that your machines are actually uh, green in the sense that they are using green energy. So it should be okay, right? Do you agree with that? Not really? Yeah, that's not really the case, right? So they are, and, and we can recognize that they are trying really hard uh, to lower the impact that they have on the planet. Uh, they have a lot of initiatives and, and, and some of them, so it's about a lot of different acronyms. I've listed uh, some of them here. Um, they're not really important, but uh, the point is, so, um, so maybe I can talk about one, uh, one or two maybe. So the first one uh, is um, uh, power um, uh, usage effectiveness. So when you are running uh, some hardware, it consumes some energy, and ideally, uh, there is no overhead. Uh, so that, that's 100%. Uh, 20 years ago, in my data center, uh, it was more like 1.6. So 60% overhead on top of what you can get uh, ideally. Nowadays, we are at 1.2, maybe 1.1. So that's great, but we are at the limit. We will never get to one anyway, right? There's always some kind of overhead. So it's done. We can't do better than that. Um, so they are doing a lot of things, um, and uh, they are also um, purchasing um, uh, you know, power agreement. So they are uh, buying green energy that is injected directly into the grid. Um, but at the end of the day, we are still consuming some resources also because it's not just about the power. It's also about the machines themselves. Um, the digital um, industry is growing 10% per year, which means that we are adding more and more machines. So maybe not 10% more per year, but at some point we are still building machines, which means, and everything around the machines. So it means uh, concrete, buildings, uh, rare metals, and things like that. They are trying to actually um, recycle some of the old machines, uh, but we are not really good at that uh, either. So at the end of the day, we are still adding more machines. It's still bad for the planet. So if we can uh, do something better, if we can optimize uh, the, the things that we are doing, that's uh, even, even better for the planet. Yeah, but uh, I don't like the gloom and doom uh, kind of uh, environmental uh, talks. So l let's remember some other things that are kind of important, right? A lot of what we're doing is actually um, uh, creating avoidance. Uh, and you know, whenever you're going, so we, we are starting on our journey of uh, uh, actually understanding the math and the accounting, the carbon counting around this. And, and potentially the most complicated subject are those of avoidance. It's not like, it has nothing to do with, with what you do. It's with what doesn't need to be done. So like, uh, if we do a computer system where suddenly you don't need to go to the DMV uh, drive there uh, in order to get something done, all of these carbon emissions don't happen, right? And, and like when we collaborate uh, on these beautiful digital systems we have created, uh, probably there's less paper happening and paper bad. So, uh, 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 and, and in a way, there's something really interesting about the past of our industry. Actually, over the last 20 years, there was an explosion of usage and the carbon footprint uh, of our domain hasn't actually gone up. It's basically stable for, for mostly 20 years because of this PUE going from 1.8 to, you know, and now Google says 1.1. And uh, so we've been able up until now uh, to compensate and probably we have potentially been uh, contributing to some serious levels of avoidance. 
but maybe that's over now, right? Uh, again, uh, on the efficiency level, maybe we're not going to gain much, and maybe a lot of the, trans the like the digital transformation and the avoidance that can be created through that, probably already done, and it's going to continue on uh, uh, growing in 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 like the next ten years, which is kind of the good moment for us to stop throwing metal at stuff. Because, uh, you know, uh, again, ooh, I, I have to be on this side of the thing for, for, the, ooh, for the clicker to work. Because, you know, uh, like, uh, uh, again, if, uh, and I've been reading through so much of their marketing and, uh, you know, actual interesting papers. Uh, you know, uh, Ernst & Young these days would give you a, a carbon audit and it will be Ernst & Young style with lots of tables and, and a lot of acronyms and all of the CFEs and PUEs and all of that. And the kind of amusing, amazing thing that always happens, and I don't know how, it ends up with a zero. And, uh, and, and the thing is with zeros is that it's really, really hard to do math with zeros. Like you add zeros and you have zero. And you subtract zeros and you have zero. And you multiply zeros and you have zeros. You divide by zero, you're in trouble. Uh, and, and no, and it's kind of a thing, so you can't really use it, right? So uh, um, we're going to assume uh, that, you know, even if it's, let, let's assume it's not zero, right? Let, let's use an assumption that says it ain't actually zero. And, we'll, and whatever it is, whatever the number is, we're going to try to make it lower. And, and one of the interesting things is that when you look at these zeros, these are your scope one and scope two friends. These are the things that take into account the carbon emissions uh, of running a server, while most, and I, and I don't know what the number is, right? But most models say something like 50% of the carbon emissions of a workload of a computer have been created at the moment in which it was put into the rack, right? It's the shipping it and building it and, and everything else around it. So uh, uh, zero, <laughs> it, it can actually not be zero. And, and replacing those, even if you recycle them, recycling, extremely energy non-efficient re recycling stuff. You can, usually you need a lot of heat to recycle. So I, I, I put here a, 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 a good friend. Uh, I was looking like for quotes, for, for the, because it's nice to have quotes for, for a talk. Uh, and like, uh, oh, uh, so one of the interesting things, uh, uh, how many of you are aware of this Sir Deming? Uh, he, he's aware of everything. Like, <laughs> come here, do the talk. Uh, uh, so uh, he's like the, the, the father of statistical process management. And uh, you may have heard about things like, you know, Kanban and Kaizen. Kanban, Kaizen? Yes. Like, like the Japanese being really, really good and we learning from the Japanese about how to do actual process management. The interesting thing here is that it was actually an American that after the Second World War went to Japan and they like, and he inspired all of that. So it has Japanese names, but it's basically an American. So, and, 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 and uh, you know, and I, I think, you know, th this one everybody knows, like in God we trust, all others have to bring data. Now, the really interesting thing about this, and because we're going to talk about math and really, really bad math, is that he, he one of the better known things of Deming is, uh, the seven deadly sins of management. And one of them is, you know, the KPI story, is uh, looking at numbers and looking only at the numbers you can have. Because more often than not, actually making a process better is going to depend on a lot of stuff that you don't know how to measure yet. And because, you're, you know, when you have numbers, people love KPIs. They're going to look at what they can actually count. So uh, we'll try to go and do some counting. Up. Oh, yeah. So uh, 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 luckily enough, uh, even those of you who are, who are not like math majors, are, are the, like this function, uh, it's an easy one, right? Uh, so you know, we have to start thinking about it. So how do we think about it? Kind of easy. We take the resource usage. We, uh, the resources, we multiply them by the usage. We take our PUE, 1.1, 1.2, and some of those are published, yay. 
we look at the carbon, carbon intensity of the grid, of the actual uh, production of energy that is used there. We multiply all of that, yay, we get a number that is, uh, that is going to sell, uh, tell us how many grams, kilos, tons of CO2 uh, our usage has created. Evidently, the problem here is that uh, you can't actually get all of this, this data. No, like nobody's gonna give it you this, like even the nice ones that are going to give you their carbon emissions, they're not going to give you the kilowatt hours. So uh, you kind of have to, to use their modeling, which again tends to end up with a zero. Uh, up. Some numbers we can trust, actually. And, and if you haven't looked at electricitymap.org, I, I enjoin you to do so. It's a zen moment because you can actually see like the live variation through the day of the carbon mix. And that's part of the complexity. This actually moves around within the day. Within the day, it might be all solar, all hydro, all fun. And another hour, it's all like carbon and fumes going out. Um, so, uh, again, uh, 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 and when you're going to this, uh, like, beautiful map here, one of the interesting things is that, like, we live on the internet, right? And uh, even if, you know, like, hey, my server's there, if all of your clients are here, it's going to be potentially quite complicated to actually understand what's the global uh, carbon impact they're going to have. And, uh, and this is, by the way, where all of the experts are going to be yelling at each other. We'll go to some yelling afterwards. Generally, what we want to try to achieve, you know, we, we is grab some level of numbers that at least are going to be relative. So if we can't get to absolute numbers, if I can't get to actually being able to tell you this website over three months generated this amount of carbon emissions, if we believe that it's non-zero, what would be interesting is just being able to go and figure out a delta, making whatever that number is as a bit smaller. So in a way, our question would be, what are the things we can actually have control of over as developers? Not as the ones running data centers because none of you have data centers except him. He has, but uh, like all of the others, uh, 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 so the question is basically now, what can we measure and what we can we measure that we have levers on and that actually has an impact? Fabien, what can we measure? That's the next one, actually. Okay, so um, we need to measure something. We need to measure the performance of your applications because that's what you can optimize, right? As a developer, I can optimize the software that I actually write. Um, so I, I wanted to be very concrete. I wanted a, a, a good example, a Drupal one. So I found one and there are many, many other ones out there. So this one is based on uh, Drupal, uh, a performance optimization that was done for Drupal 8.8, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, that's it. And it's very interesting because um, it was about an optimization on the JSON API endpoint, making it 30% faster than it was. So that's huge. It's not a few percent, that's 30 percent. So how is it possible? It's possible because we have tools nowadays uh, to do that. Bec uh, yeah. So as human beings, we are really, really bad at understanding how a computer actually works behind the scenes. Right? Uh, whenever I've tried to optimize some piece of code because I thought that you know, I had a good understanding on how the code actually worked, I was wrong. And the only way to actually check if you're right or wrong is using a tool that tells you that your code is actually faster or slower. So one such tool uh, in the PHP world is Blackfire. Uh, remember, I like you know, things to go fast. Uh, that's why uh, about 10 years ago, I, I, I decided to create uh, my own profiler uh, for the PHP world. 
So that, that's Blackfire. Uh, you can get there and, 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 and use it to optimize your, not to optimize the code, but actually to understand how your code is actually behaving on uh, production servers or your development machines uh, as well. So, um, so do you want a demo? Yeah, you can say no, you will have a demo anyway, <laughs> right? Uh, it's not a live demo. Oh, too bad. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the way it works is that uh, Blackfire actually instruments your code. Um, and it gets a lot of data about what's going on when your code is actually running. Basically, all the function calls, right? So whenever there is a function that is called in your code, we record that number of time and the CPU usage, the I.O. Uh, uh, memory as well, uh, network activities, things like that. And then we have several representations. This one is what we call the call graph. So basically it is the function calls uh, and, and the, the, the hierarchy between the function calls. So when function A calls function B, how many of times and things like that. And if you have a look at the left side of the screen, you can see that some uh, functions are actually called a lot of times. Many, many, many times. So the basics of optimizing something is trying to find such problems, a, a method, a function that is called many times, and see why and how you can optimize that. Oh, by the way, almost 100% of the time, the problem comes from SQL. You have too many SQL statements for a request. 99% of the case, that's, you don't even need a profiler. You need a profiler to actually um, understand where the SQL statement is actually called. That's, that's the goal here. So it's nothing fancy, really. Um, so here, um, the fix was actually not to optimize the number of calls or um, optimize the way the function actually works and trying to optimize the things it's doing. It was just about adding a layer of cache. It's kind of cheating, I would say, but that's good enough. Um, so you add a layer of cache and you're done, right? No, you need to check that you have actually made the code faster because most of the time, caches makes code slower because the cache is actually slower than the code that you are replacing. I can tell you that I've seen that many, many, many times. And that's counterintuitive. You are adding some cache, so intuitively it's going to be faster, but that's not the case because, you know, if your cache is on Redis, for instance, or MySQL or whatever, you have some latency and it can be huge. Um, okay, so here uh, we are uh, profiling again the code after adding the cache. You can see the call graph is very different and now uh, all the method calls to the uh, Symfony normalizer uh, or ser serializer component, they are gone, replaced by some Redis calls. Uh, if you have a look at uh, the numbers um, at the top of the screen, you can see that the code is actually faster, so, so we are um, using uh, less CPU time, uh, less uh, SQL statements as well, uh, and less memory. There's a secret feature on Blackfire, and that's how you can compare two different profiles. So you don't even need to do that yourself. What you can do is, asking Blackfair, can you compare profile A and profile B? And uh, here, everything in blue means that it's faster or the same. Everything in red means that it, it's getting slower. So here we can see that the code is actually faster, 30%. Um, that's what I, I, I told you. And basically, we have more calls to uh, Redis, which makes sense because that's the cache layer. So that's efficient. So it was committed in the code and part of Drupal 8.8. Um, 
that's the solution. That's one solution. It's not, you know, it's not about solving all the problems out there. But, and that's the important point here for you, developers. As developers, we have a responsibility. If you're making Drupal faster, it's not just about your websites. It's about all the websites out there using Drupal. That's huge, right? And the same goes if you are optimizing some libraries used by Drupal, like Symfony. It's also the case if you can optimize PHP itself. It's even, you know, the, big, the impact is going to be even bigger than that. And if you optimize Linux as well. So as a developer, even if, if you think that, you know, it's a small optimization, it adds up really quickly just because you know, PHP, Symfony, Drupal, they are really popular out there. A lot of different people are using it. Um, and, um, okay, so uh, before talking about um, numbers here, um, Ori has some, some, some yeah, more I mean, math for you. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. We're starting with, the, we're just starting with the really bad math. It's gonna get, you know, downhill really fast. So, uh, uh, so, uh, and, and again, uh, and we, we we kind of have to talk with a, a bunch of humility because we're, we, you know, we're taking this incredibly seriously, and taking this incredibly seriously is first and foremost knowing that we don't actually, you know, are the experts of that. Uh, so we're trying to, you know, learn and Google stuff like this very beautiful uh, article from February. Uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, has, you know, this very strong correlation between global temperatures and UFO sightings. Uh, so we're, not gonna, we're gonna give you bad math, not that bad. Uh, and, and, and again, and, and, and about who's doing the bad math. And we said a bit earlier that uh, network traffic is, you know, there are controversies here. So uh, uh, this is uh, uh, like uh, 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 the shift project. Uh, some of the most uh, serious people around uh, uh, modeling carbon emissions uh, and the IEA, and they kind of disagrees by a factor, 8x but 10x, so someone did a bit to bite. Uh, uh, our own auditors, when we did our carbon audit, he, 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 he found that, so I was like, oh, this, this looks like <gasps> so much, and it was like a 10x problem again, uh, like 8x problem, uh, someone, did, you know, didn't divide. Um, and so, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 in a way, you, you can, you know, you know, when you go on in this journey, early on, you can kind of throw your hands in the air and say, I don't know. And uh, the thing is that uh, you should be okay with doing the bad math because at any rate if you're making it better you're not making it worse right if uh, what we are absolutely sure is that performance density all of these things are perfect proxy, proxies for carbon emissions we know that so we might not know precisely the the uh, uh, values of the factors but if we're relatively gaining 30 percent there we know it's 30% of avoided emissions. So, some really bad math now. You're oh, doing the math? You're yeah, doing yeah, the yeah. math. I'm doing the math. Um, <laughs> so, as I said, um, the digital uh, world is consuming 4% of the carbon emissions, or actually uh, emitting uh, 4%. Uh, out of the 4%, 2% are for uh, terminals, so your computers, mobile phones, and things like that. And uh, the other 2% is about network and the machines, and the machines are about 1%, okay? Um, we know that PHP is actually powering almost 75% uh, of all the websites out there. And that's the number of websites. It's not really about the traffic, right? But anyway, let's say that it's a huge number, right? Um, then uh, the Drupal JSON API has been made uh, uh, really fast, so it's 30% faster than before. So that's again, uh, this one is not an assumption actually, it's, um, it's, 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 it's for sure. We know that Drupal is almost 2% of the websites out there, 
uh, we're not so sure. And again, that's the number of websites. It's not the, the traffic. It's not. Uh, we are not even sure that they are using JSON API actually. But you know, we are throwing numbers here. Um, we are uh, guesstimate that one percent of the traffic goes to uh, the JSON API uh, endpoint. Um, so it's all about hypotheses here, right? They are all wrong for sure. And that's okay, it's not a problem. But if we are doing the math, we are at uh, 14 uh, megaton, no, kiloton uh, a year. Maybe it's twice more than that, maybe it's half of that, but it's non zero, right? It is significant in any case. So we can say for sure that this optimization has a huge impact on the planet. It's not zero. It's not insignificant. Um, and by the way, it took maybe two hours for someone somewhere to figure that out. You know, it's not like it took months to actually optimize that. That's not the case. But then, if you can do that with Drupal, you can do that with something else. You don't need to optimize Drupal, actually. You can get more performance for free by doing what? You know that. Writing better code. Ah, that's hard. Running <laughs> better code, you know, writing better code is hard. That's possible. I want something simple. HTTP cache. Sure, it's too hard. Something else. <laughs> Upgrading PHP. <laughs> PHP is getting faster. Not, not for every new release, but almost uh, any new release is faster than the previous one. It's easy, right? Just upgrade to the latest PHP version. And again, we can do some math here. And again, the server represents, you know, 1%. PHP powers 75% uh, of the websites. Uh, the market for PHP 8.1 is actually 24%, uh, and PHP 8.1 is 30% faster than the previous version, or 20%, or 10%. We don't care. We know that it is faster than the previous version. So if everyone in the room and everyone in the world actually upgraded to PHP 8.1 from day one, that represents a large number, 81 megaton of CO2. That, so that's huge again. And again, it's wrong. Um, it's not very serious, but we know that's a huge number. It's non-zero. How many of you are not using PHP 8.1? Mm hmm what a shame. And so maybe, maybe your hosting company is not supporting 8.1 yet. You need to switch to a better one. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I, I can't talk about the product, so I'm not going to say the, the product name. Anyway, um, and, and maybe you cannot upgrade because you are still on Drupal 7. Are you? Yeah. So you're stuck, right? So, and the good news is, uh, the bad news is that it's not just about Drupal 7, right? It's about WordPress, Magento, some version of Magento, and things like that. Um, so a, a very small thing, because I, I see Nicolas. Nicolas is looking at me saying, oh, that's not the case with Symfony, right? <laughs> and yeah, and that's something that we, we've been uh, doing for many years now, making sure that even the oldest version of Symfony, the ones that are still supported, we make sure that they do support the latest version of PHP because we know that it can have an impact. So even if you cannot migrate from Symfony 4.4 to Symfony 5.4, at least you can upgrade PHP. And that's useful. But there are more problems about running Drupal 7. It's not just about a carbon emission. It's not just about the planet. It's about a lot of different things. First, it is slower 
because you know PH, uh, uh, um, Drupal 7 is slower than uh, uh, Drupal 8, and PHP 7.4 or 7 something is slower than PHP 8, which means that from an ACO perspective, you're missing out. It also means that your revenue, if you have an e-commerce website, it's lower and the revenue is lower than it should be because we know that is if a website is faster, then the revenue goes up. There are many, many, many um, articles about that uh, from Amazon and, and, and all the big players out there, e-commerce big players. So that's an issue. So you should really uh, uh, see if you can upgrade uh, to a, a, a new version of PHP and Drupal just because it's better for the planet, but it's also better for your uh, revenue and um, uh, engagement as well. So it's not just about e-commerce website, of course. Um, and then you, you, you might also have security issues. And last but not least, as a developer, I mean, I'm not a Drupal developers, developer, but if I were a, a Drupal developer, I would not want to use Drupal 7 anymore. I would want to use the latest version, right? As developers, we love to work with the latest and the greatest, right? So that's a lot of different things, and they are all going in the same direction, right? It's better for the planet, it's better for uh, recruitment, it's better for uh, the revenue, it's better for everything. So why are you waiting? You, you need to upgrade, right? We need to work on that. And again, it has some big impact. It's not insignificant. It's really huge. Okay, so it's all about you know um, getting better, um, having faster code, and upgrading. That's the easiest thing that you can do. I'll, I'll try to go fast now because we, we're, we're kind of late now. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, again, uh, as we've repeated all along, um, carbon accounting is not yet a science. Most of the data you're going to uh, get is, is, is of low quality, uh, and uh, uh, if you can't really actually figure out where to start, uh, start with making apps faster. Um, uh, and again, and not all of the uh, data is going to be that bad. Electricity map, really good. So actually running the same application in Portland or in Paris is precisely five times, like it, Paris is actually five times better. So one of the things you can, you know, actually do is uh, uh, try to have the influence you can on where uh, uh, workloads are going to be running. Because that's, you know, like five times, he got 30%. And it, yeah, and the PHP 8.1, 30%. This is like a lot of percents. This is five times. I don't know how to translate times to, to percent because I'm really good at math. Okay. And, and you know, and when we, we, we look at it, it's actually, you know, it's kind of easy to go um, and, and try to figure out the bang for the buck, right? What's under my responsibility, where do I have levers? And you know, and it's kind of a pyramid. And you know, and, and you know, okay, maybe I can get up to twenty times better by writing better code, and maybe I can get ten times better by choosing the workload location. Uh, if I have uh, customers that are mostly in Europe, uh, and I can decide between Ireland and uh, Sweden, don't use Ireland. Uh, we like the Irish, but it's very carbon intensive. And, and again, and the, 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 between Sweden and Germany, this is huge. Evidently, when you do that, you <laughs> actually have to think about the, 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 the other effects because the speed is important. If your customers are in Australia, maybe don't put it in Sweden because again, we don't forcefully understand very well the network model and potentially you're just going to create so much more carbon emissions over the network. And, uh, uh, and when you're people like us running actual workloads on servers, density. There are so many levers we can get by simply saying, you know, let's get more workloads on a single server. Uh, it's possible. We have the science for that. That's actually stuff we know how to do. Um, 
uh, we've started with the carbon audit. So one, one of the, like, on this journey, uh, before, you know, uh, uh, you know, we have all of these questions of relative change and positive change, but the first thing is to establish a baseline. Even if this baseline is wrong, and I do believe it is, uh, it's important because that's the only way you have to measure something you can optimize, right? Something that needs to get better. And, and, and you know, and, and we have this like number of 94 uh, tons a year for the company, and which is the marketing number, which is a damn lie, because we're a distributed company. So evidently, uh, no commute, no commute, not a lot of carbon emissions already. Uh, but the number that we need to look at is the actual number that is generated by the workloads of our customers. And this is what we, you know, uh, I don't want to change, you know, like what computer can people buy? Not, it's not the first thing we should do, right? Uh, buying maybe one that has a high repair index better, but that's like, this is the 3,700 tons we need to look at and figure out every one of the levers we can have. And we have, you know, like we're multi-cloud, uh, we you can run on hundreds of data centers. That's a lot of optimization points we can use. So if it's not really important, if it's in Norway or Sweden, <laughs> that just between Norway and Sweden, you have a 2x thing. Nor Nor Norway is just like, whoa. Um, and, uh, and again, and, and it's about going and measuring and trying to figure out all of the small places that make big impact. And, uh, and as you've seen, it's kind of quickly enough you get into the kilotons. And, and this is, you know, like you yourself, uh, you can be responsible in your company, us, uh, us for our customers, for actually, uh, 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 you know, uh, significant ch uh, change. Um, uh, so, Part of what, uh, you know, uh, as we said, we're not clim climate experts, but uh, <laughs> there are actually climate experts around. So I'm, I'm all the time re repeating it's not a science, but there are actual scientists working on this. We've hired one, and, and like, uh, uh, she, she was at the IPCC before. Like, she wouldn't work with us if, you know, it's, well, yeah, that's, yeah, let's continue on. Like, uh, and I think, you know, like, uh, uh, at the end of the day, you know, I, we started with the thing that we have kids. So this is a, a, a beautiful kind of uh, a representation of projected carbon emissions and global uh, temperature rise. And like, and you can personalize it, you can uh, Google it, uh, it's by uh, uh, Sophie Lewis. And, and like, these are the actual numbers of, uh, uh, you know, and this is like the, this is the horrible business as usual scenario. Like if we don't actually now, actually now start in our daily lives, in our work environment, start. This only happens if like, if you take us seriously. <laughs> uh, if you don't take this really, really seriously, this is the scenario that happens. And this is, you know, now, and it's not about, you know, even uh, carbon, you know, Paris Accords in 2030. Uh, all of that is actually too late. Look at the graph, it's too late. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, my, my, my kid, 11 years old, told me that he doesn't want to have kids because at school they told him about, you know, climate change, and he was like, okay, humans, they pollute, I'm not going to create new humans. And that was, and, you know, and I'm not, uh, like, uh, if, it, if he doesn't want to have kids, it's great, but not for that reason. That sounds like a horrible, depressing reason. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we can get better at being good. Any questions? <laughs> um, so, uh, once upon a time, I almost quit doing Drupal commerce work to do utility analytics. So helping power companies optimize um, the production of energy. Because even if we reduce like the, the consumption of energy by any one application, that doesn't mean that that power company now gets to turn on one fewer generators. Right, like, because like, the, 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 the energy exists, it's been produced, 
at what point, you know, how, how, do you, how do you measure the impact then of optimization because they may still have the same number on, so. It's, it's, it's not, so if you look, you know, like if you look at, uh, uh, and again, Google are the, be oh, sorry, Google are the best at least at marketing on this, and you will see that they're complaining about all the others that are doing market-based, so basically they're buying el green electricity somewhere else than where it's actually being used, okay? But, and what they're saying, and which is true, that the others don't do hourly accounting. So if you look at the electricity map, you will see that the carbon mix actually changes by hour. And therefore, absolutely, if, you, you know, if there's a lot of consumption on the grid, it will go towards the least green uh, sources because you know, they're not always there. So uh, uh, actually, you know, like the, the, the rule of, ener you know, of uh, energy cons you know, uh, is that the energy consumed and the energy produced are always absolutely equal, yeah. forcefully. Uh, like because this is how electric <laughs> grids actually work, but uh, yeah, so so it actually has an impact. If you you generating uh, less uh, um, uh, consumption, they actually don't have to turn on the carbon emitting uh, energy sources. Anything else? Questions. Um, so I was just kind of wondering, so what do you think about um, at this time, like we're kind of going through the phase of people are starting to now get into like Web3, um, and as you said, like playing newer, faster games, um, and like metaverse, augmented reality, everything that takes so much more data, all the extra data that's being used and energy that's being created. Um, do you think, uh, like as you were saying, uh, do you think there's a way that we can become more efficient? As you were saying, like, you know, would take, if all of us kind of, you know, slow down one thing or optimize our code and optimize everything a little bit better, do you think there's, there will be a time where that we'll actually be able to get close to being able to, like, look at our own code or look at sites or whatever we're doing to say, like, hey, we're getting closer to net zero by doing know, X, Y, and Z or something? Is there a possibility? Uh, I, I, again, net zero can't possibly yeah. exist. It's, and it's, uh, uh, you know, and it's really uh, uh, buying into the lie, and we cannot, we must not. Mm -hmm. What we can do is actually ask ourselves for the service rendered, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because what we are doing is useful, right? <laughs> if what we're doing is useless, then anyway, we shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is potentially useful for avoidance, and great. So the question is, can we actually make systems that are extremely useful and less carbon intensive? Uh, because we don't want to you know, turn off all of the things. We still want the, the phones and the games. And, but, but, uh, but currently, we are incredibly inefficient. And, if, you know, and when we're introducing new stuff, like Web3, I'm not allowed to troll. Uh, but uh, when something is by definition and by construction uh, energy inefficient, like uh, proof of stake doesn't work and proof of work is basically proving that you're burning the planet. So I would say, you know, from my standpoint, I will not participate in uh, uh, NFT Web3 stuff uh, personally. I, I don't foresee, I won't forcefully yell at people that do. I will probably yell at people that do. Just shut down the machines. Yeah, doing web three. <laughs> that's that's a nightmare. So, so and I kind of I, I actually tested uh, 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 deploying like a geth, so uh, an Ethereum thing, and doing a Solidity workflow on platform uh, to see. Uh, uh, and it's actually really cool <laughs> because uh, like uh, developing in Solidity is a, is just a shit show. It's horrible, not not good. And it's like fun. And then and then I was like, yeah, but I'm not telling anyone about it. So we'll cut this part of the video. And don't run Web3 things on the platform, please. We won't, we won't like you. <laughs> get, get the mic. Get the mic. Uh, um, so the thing is to, to basically be mindful, really, rather than actually trying to solve 
um, every problem really because the way technology is um, scaling with um, Bitcoin and um, all of these things, as long as you have a lot of people um, using the internet, it's just going to be um, a lot more of um, carbon um, energy. So it's, ju it's just better to be mindful, really, uh, rather than trying to solve you see, like, uh, if you look at the graphs of growth of uh, carbon emissions related to uh, cloud usage, and if people actually took to heart the 8.1 PHP thing, we would have been flat. That's enough to keep the planet, like on our domain, probably flat. So no, I don't believe that uh, you know uh, uh, that we there's nothing we can do, and it's like okay, usage is going to grow, and therefore carbon emissions. The the truth of the matter is that when I I think that Fabian also, but I think many of it, when I see software, I'm horrified. I mean, it, we're 2022, and this is horribly written, and this is horribly run, and this is incredibly inefficient. And we can actually do better. I mean, we look, you know, in, 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 in the stuff that uh, I don't want to, again, uh, uh, publicize uh, my, my, my company on this, but uh, uh, you can earn factors in, in density. Like, th this is so incredibly inefficient. People are running these VMs, uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, uh, even you, you, you look at the Kubernetes cluster and how it's built and the level of duplication of work that happens in these things, how incredibly inefficient they are, there are factors to be gained. So if we're, we're growing by 10% a year, but every year we got, gain a factor, I mean, if we actually work on this, we know we, we can actually have sustainable growth of the digital domain with zero growth, at least, of the carbon emissions. It is feasible. I mean, and I mean you've seen the numbers, right? Bad math, but that's actually saying, I mean, this bad math actually says that if we work on this, and this is top, you know, top one priority, we actually can be participants to the growth of the economy, the growth of human consciousness, like uh, the, the Twitter guy said, uh, we can allow consciousness uh, uh, and not burn the planet or not be the ones responsible for it. And maybe the conclusion here is that there is hope, right? There are so many things that we can optimize. It's not like it's super optimized right now. So there are so many things that we can we can do all together to be sure that we can optimize more so that you know it's not growing as fast as as we can anticipate. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you all. Thank you.